<sighs> Let's talk about night shifts. Like a lot of people, I sometimes work night shifts. Shift work's really common. It's nearly a quarter of people actually do some kind of shift work. Obviously, some kind of shift work doesn't mean the same as night shifts. Shift work just means that you're doing some kind of irregular pattern of work so that your organisation can run for longer periods of time than an individual employee can. Now, there are health problems with shift work. Everything that I'm talking about today is mainly focused about night shifts, but it is also true to a lesser degree with other kinds of shift work if you're not doing night shifts. As a junior doctor, you have to work nights, but now I'm a GP, I'm in the fortunate position where I don't actually have to do nights. Some GPs have to work nights, but not all of them do, so you can kind of sign up to it. At the moment, what I do, I do my day work in Yorkshire, and then I'm actually on the night shift rotor up in the Orkney Islands, and I do some night work in Orkney on a rotor. What are the health problems caused by night shifts? Well, first of all, tiredness, and that's not trivial. If you are working night shifts or you are on an irregular shift pattern, then your sleep pattern is disrupted. You're probably not going to get enough sleep, and even if you do, it's probably not going to be quite good enough quality. That means that you make more mistakes, and you're more likely to have an accident. There's a really interesting study that I saw about the mistakes that people make on the night shift and it's common that people think that on the first night you're more likely to make mistakes but then as you get into the shift pattern then you're less likely to make mistakes later on in the shift. The interesting thing is that's not true. People do make more mistakes at night but it doesn't matter whether it's day one of your night shift, day two, day three, day four, so on, whatever. The difference is that on the first night people make mistakes but they still acknowledge and they're still aware that they're making mistakes a few nights in then people don't realize they're making those mistakes because they're too tired to realize that they're mistakes so you do still make mistakes but you lose the ability to tell that you're making mistakes, which is actually a bit more worrying. Now that's characteristic of sleep deprivation more generally, where you lose the ability to tell that you're deprived of sleep. Sleep deprivation is really interesting and that's kind of another story, um, but let's focus on night shifts and let's get back to the nights for now. But as well as accidents, night shifts do cause problems for your body directly. There's an increased risk that you'll get diabetes, heart attacks, strokes and cancer, as well as mental health problems. Why that is is interesting and sometimes the causality is kind of difficult to pick apart exactly. It's probably something to do with the disruption of your natural body clock, your circadian rhythm. Now what that involves is basically your body regulates itself with different hormones at different times of day depending on what it's expecting that you're going to need. If your shift pattern is different and out of sync with what your body's expecting it's not good for your body, it's not good for your health. We'll get to that more a little bit in a second. The other thing that does really add to it is that when your body is out of pattern and when you're doing irregular shift work then you're more likely to be tired, you're less likely to want to do regular exercise, you're less likely to eat regularly. It disrupts your whole body pattern and makes it harder for you to get into regular healthy habits. Now your body clock involves lots of different hormones. One that's just worth mentioning is something called melatonin. You might have heard of melatonin before and it's sometimes used actually as a sleeping tablet to try and help reset jet lag because it is involved in that body clock mechanism. Melatonin does a few things. The main thing that it's involved in is sleepiness and you naturally produce more melatonin towards the end of the day to help you wind down and get to sleep. And melatonin production is actually reduced when it's light outside. So even if you're trying to get into a nocturnal kind of pattern, then that's still going to be disrupted by the fact that your day-night cycle is partly affected by whether it's day or night. So people aren't necessarily meant to go completely nocturnal. But as well as being involved in your sleep cycle, melatonin has other effects on your body which relate to the health effects of night shifts. Take diabetes, for example. If you work regular night shifts, you are about 10% more likely to develop diabetes. That's quite a lot. It does depend on the number of years you do night shifts for, on how many night shifts you do, and on how long the nights are. So it does actually relate directly to how many night shifts you do and how much night work you do. Few reasons for that. 
one of which could be related to the melatonin directly. Melatonin is involved in how your body regulates processing blood sugar. So if you work in a lot of night shifts, if your melatonin production is a bit out of kilter, then that puts your risk of diabetes up. The other thing is related to the lifestyle things that we said about. You're less likely to do regular exercise. You're less likely to eat well. So those things all add up to increase your risk of diabetes. Likewise with heart disease. The relationship between melatonin and cancer is actually really interesting and let's come back to that at the end. And that's just talking about your physical health. Night shifts also increase the chances of you getting depressed, of you getting anxious and developing other mental health problems. Some of us practically do have to work nights and I do work nights. So maintaining a good pattern is the most important thing that you can do. Try and make sure that you are getting enough sleep and you're getting it in as much of a pattern as you can do. Try and make sure that you're going out and getting regular exercise. I thought it'd be good to talk about exercise whilst outside running, but it was a bit windy. I try and get out for a run most days as well. So let's just do a voiceover. When I'm on a night shift, I try and get out for a run most days, partly just to get out, get some fresh air, natural light, and stretch my legs a little bit. But also because exercise is really important for your body. It helps improve the quality of your sleep, which is important when you're doing a night shift. And also, it helps your body process blood sugar. So that helps to bring down that risk of diabetes a little bit, which is really, really important for your long-term health anyway, but particularly when we're talking about doing night shifts. It's also really nice to get out because Orkney is beautiful, not that I really do it justice on this grisly day. And keep good eating habits. It's extra important to make sure that you're eating regular healthy meals and that you're not snacking because I know particularly when I was in hospital on night shifts as a junior doctor, there's always chocolate out and people just graze and nibble. Not good for your physical health and it adds to that risk of heart disease and diabetes and so on and so on. And make sure you do what you can to help with your mental health. Exercise and diet will help with that. But make sure that you're not neglecting your relationships socially. So if you're out of step with when you're awake with with your friends and your family then it's going to be harder to see them socially but make sure in those windows when you and them are awake that you do talk to people that you do engage with people and you'll feel a bit better for it personally i find reading really helpful i read to relax and i really enjoy it i find it kind of meditative and just as an extra aside don't underestimate how important having hobbies is whatever it is Often if you've got something that's a little bit creative that you can produce and do and enjoy and see yourself improving with it, it really is good for your mental health. I'll put that to one side, but just bear it in mind. But when all is said and done, night shifts are not good for your health and there is only so much you can do. I don't want to be working night shifts the rest of my life. What I'm doing at the moment works very well for me. I enjoy doing it. But... I don't know how long I want to be doing it for, but I know that it does add up and these health problems do rack up the longer you do it for. The issue with sleep patterns, it tends to start to get worse when you get into your mid-40s, rule of thumb. I know that a lot of doctors burn out. Burnout is a very serious problem when it comes to work and careers and it's something that I'm very aware I want to avoid. I don't want to find that when I'm 50, I can't. I'm very conscious that pacing work and pacing my career is going to be much better for my physical and mental health in the long term. And if I can still be working, you know, a couple of days a week when I'm into my 70s, that'd be brilliant. We'll see how that goes. I think it's just something that's worth bearing in mind and thinking in terms of your life and career and how to plan things and what's the right thing to do for one period of your life might not be sustainable for a long term and it might not be good for you in the long term. So bear in mind what's right for you at the moment and what might not be right for you in the future and how long things are sustainable for. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on things. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments below. Do you work shifts? How do you find it? And what do you do to maintain your physical and mental health when you are doing your shift work? Remember, if you like the video, click the like button, ring the bell for notifications and subscribe to the channel and share the links because it really helps to get the channel out there. I'm trying to do these videos regularly, but obviously sometimes life and work gets in the way. But hopefully I'll have a new video for you next week. So I'll see you then.
well done for staying till the end. Now the riffraff have gone, let's talk about cancer. So, night shifts are associated with higher rates of cancer. That's skin cancer, lung cancer, bladder cancer, but particularly hormone-related cancers. So, breast cancer, endometrial cancer, and prostate cancer. Why that is, is a little bit unclear. It's probably got something to do with the lifestyle stuff, but also, it does seem like it's got something to do with the body clock directly. Now, Melatonin is probably part of it. Melatonin, as well as having its direct effect on sleepiness, also has a certain overlap with some other sex hormones. Now that's quite common with any kind of hormone in your body, that they do their specific thing, but also they have certain overlaps with others. Melatonin, as a result, looks like it could affect that hormone system, and increase your risk of some hormone-related cancers, so breast cancer and endometrial cancer for women, prostate cancer for men. The other thing that relates to your body clock is that your sex hormones do vary at different times of day anyway, so again, if your body clock is disrupted because of shift work, then that could be adding to it as well. Anyway, I thought it was interesting, and I thought that if you stayed this long on the video, you might be interested as well. But that's it for now. See you next week.